On today's show, we discuss the squirrely schedules of entrepreneurs without the nuts to do whatever it takes. You have questions? America's number one business coach has answers. It's your Broda from Minnesota. Here's another edition of Ask Clay Anything on the Thrive Time Business Coach Radio Show. Yes, and yes, Thrive Nation, I'm not sure I'm not sure when you're gonna hear today's show, but whenever you hear today's show, just know that this was re- was recorded on the day where the Patriots play the Chiefs in the championship game to, d- to determine who goes to the Super Bowl. And why does that matter? It's because it's in my schedule and it's going to happen. That's just example number one, all right? So Chuck, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that say I really want to achieve success. I want to grow my men's haircut business. Oh, I want to. I'd I want to grow to. my plumbing company. I want to grow my whatever the business is. Right. And they say, but then I don't have time to watch the Patriots game because I uh, I don't have time to watch my favorite team play their football game on TV. I don't have time to spend time with my kids. I don't have time to watch my favorite movie. I don't have time to take my wife on a date because I'm trying to run my business. Or the other way, they say, I didn't exactly. get a chance to run my business because I was watching the Patriots game or because I was on a date or because I was on a vacation. I couldn't run my business because I was doing this with my family, or I couldn't have a successful family because I was doing this with my business, and I believe you can do both. Yes, you can. And so you on today's can. show, we are going to teach how to get it all done uh, during this one life that we, that we all have and these 24 hours that we all have. So, Chup, action item number one. Please read action item number one. Use one day planner for your entire life, life, life. Repeat that again, please. Use one day planner for your entire life. Yes, personal and the workplace. Okay, so today uh, I set my alarm for 3 a.m. I woke up at 3. Now, That's what early. time do you think I went to bed yesterday in order to wake up at 3 today? I'm going to say previous to 9. There you go. I went to bed right at 9. There you go. And I woke up at 3. So that's how many hours of sleep? Uh, seven, six, six. And you know, six. And, and do you know why I can fall asleep right away? Because you got up early the yesterday morning too. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, at the end of so the day. So I went to bed at nine, woke up at three. Now that's six hours of sleep. Now with six hours of sleep, you know what I did at three o'clock? I got up. You grind, you grind on something. You I got up, something. listened to some music. Yep. I listened to the yep. Mike Posner new album while I was, while I was getting ready you stuck this in morning. Middle? Listening to uh, um, little T.D. Jakes after that while I was brushing my teeth, getting ready. And then I started editing the book. Now, I want you to put the book on the uh, show notes today, a picture of the book I'm editing. Okay. Because this book is a big, nasty monster. It's 17 it's called the, reams of paper so far. <laughs> it's called the Mastermind Manuscripts. And it is a compilation of all the interviews I've done with people over the past 22 years. I'm 38. Since the age of 16, I've been interviewing people who are more successful than myself. This is all put into a book, and it's about 1,000 pages long. And uh, the book, I mean, you have to edit it down, though. It's going to end up with like 700 pages or something. Yeah. But that's when I edited the book. And I'm not editing the whole book in one day. I'm just every single day whittling chunk, away chunk, about chunk. two hours a day. Yeah. Now, what time did I see you this morning, roughly? Uh, right at 6 a.m. So I saw you at 6 a.m., mm-hmm. and I started editing the book about 3.30. So I got about two hours in. Yeah. And I'm going to do that every day. Until it's done. Right. Because if you don't, it won't get done. So Ooh. action item number one is you have to use one day planner for your entire life. So you got to put it in the calendar. I shall go to bed at 9. I shall wake up at three. You've got to put it in the calendar. Yes. Now, Chuck, Mr. Lee Cockrell, the former executive vice president of Walt Disney World Resorts, who once managed 40,000 employees, says what on this subject? What gets scheduled gets done. Now, you are a business coach. Now, I am. Tim Redmond is also a business coach. He is. Tim grew a company from two people to 450 people, from two employees to 450 employees. Slightly larger. Before the company was sold to Intuit. So the company was called Tax and Accounting Software. That company was started in a condo, a condominium with five dudes, and they, the company was sold after it reached 450 employees. I was hired near the end of that company's <laughs> success. I got hired at the peak of its success. So I was an intern there, and the year was, I believe, 2000. 2000. Uh, Tim, when did you guys sell? Yeah, it was 2001. 2001. Uh, you, you came on board in 2000, turned the company around. Oh, and ready to sell, sell it. yes. <laughs> but That's I, what we do with our interns. I showed up there. T- <laughs> the year was 2000. I was an Oral Roberts University student. I secured an internship working there. 
the company had already achieved a lot of success, and I was just a, a, a cog in that in that big wheel. But I want to tee up this idea because Chup, you um, used to manage your parents' uh, co- concrete business, correct? And how many people worked with you guys at that time, approximately? Uh, anywhere from twenty to thirty-five, depending on the year. So I would say that uh, according to Forbes out there, they say that sixty-seven percent of all the jobs that have been created in the past two decades have been created by small business owners. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want you to put a placeholder on the show notes. We'll go back and put the actual stat there. But let's just say 60% of all the jobs in America are created by small business owners, which is defined by businesses that have 50 employees or less, right? And then uh, the other remaining jobs are created by big businesses like what Tim built. So between you two, we represent all entrepreneurs. All of us. So I'm going to start with you, Tim, and I'd like to get your take on this. Every entrepreneur out there listening today, or every entrepreneur out there, has to get a day planner, and they have to schedule time for both personal and work action items. Where do most people get that wrong, and how do we get it right? Great question, Clay. I'll tell you what, I was just talking to a very, uh, financially, a very successful business owner just this week. Hmm. He's making hundreds of thousands, soon to be in the seven digits, yet he feels his life is out of control. And here's what we got down to, that he doesn't have one day planner. He's got about 22 Mm -hmm. day planners. Mm -hmm. And I would call them day unplanners because he's so (laughs) so, uh, disorganized and so spread out, he doesn't know which way is going. So let me make sure that we're getting this idea. I see a lot of entrepreneurs using a program called Todoist, Todoist, and simultaneously using Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, and simultaneously using Google Calendars, oh, yeah. and simultaneously writing the kids' soccer practices and the cheerleading practices and the baseball tournaments on a handwritten calendar. And then their wife, their husband, their spouse, has a also four different to-do lists, one for their job, one for their family. One, and so what happens is you can easily have six or seven calendars going at the same time, and then you get that feeling like, am I missing something? Am I missing something? Oh, it's the worst. So today, Chip, let me walk you through what I'm going to do today, okay? We talked about I woke up at I woke up at 3. Okay. 3.30. I wanted to listen to Mike Posner's new album. By the way, his new album is the best album I've heard in the last five years. It's pretty good. He's got a little bit of acoustic thing going, right? Like, uh, uh, is it, it all mixed up? or? Well, the, the Joshua Tree by U2 is one uh-huh. of my favorite albums. And then the One Republic Native album is an unbelievable album. album. The 2020 Experience album by Justin Timberlake is yeah, incredible. It's good. It's good. Um, and then this Mike Posner album is awesome because I, what happens is an artist will sometimes sit down and write something that um, connects with almost everybody and that conveys um, an emotional time in their life where they're at and where they're going or yeah. maybe um, words of wisdom they've learned during a part of their life. It's almost like an autobiography. And when you can connect with millions of people and teach words of wisdom that you've learned while also sharing about tragic events that you've gone through, that's when you've got something. It's powerful. And this album's really about Mike dealing with life after losing his father to, I believe, cancer, and also dealing with what it's like to be a pop star and never being able to go out in public without everyone recognizing who you are. Yeah. So it's a really um, powerful album, but I put it in my schedule to listen to that album this morning and to work on the book edits. So I got it done. Yeah. Now, then we put on the schedule to go ahead and record today's show at 6. That's what we're doing. And that's what we did. We got Then we edited the Guy Kawasaki show today, Good as show. well as recording today's Knowledge Bomb. Um, and then I'm going to, at 4 o'clock today, Chip, I'm going to go up to Reesers, and I'm going to get some incredible meat. Meat. <laughs> and you know why I'm going to get that incredible meat? Uh, because you like to grill. And because at 5 o'clock, people are coming over bo, 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 bo. to watch the Patriots play the Chiefs. To watch the Patriots beat the Chiefs. Now, last night at 8 o'clock, I was watching... The previews of the Patriots versus Chiefs, okay, where they were explaining the keys to the game, and I like to learn about the other team, and I just—it's a fun thing I do. It's something I do for fun. I like to know about Mahomes and his story, and I like to know about Brady and his story. And it's the, one of your F six goals. It's what I like to do. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that like I was working till midnight last night. Right. Um, I had I grilled with the kids last night. Had a great time with the kids. We watched Seinfeld last night. We have a great time as Ooh, a family. Nice. But I'm not just sitting there on my couch flipping through the TV, pondering what I should be doing next. I know what I want to do next exactly. because I'm intentional about planning my 
life. You know what you're not is mm. you're not reactionary, and that's where I see a lot of people go wrong. They, you know, even when they begin implementing some of these steps, meta time, you know, they're getting, they're planning their day before the burning fires go. But then what happens is they step into the work day and they let the day control them instead of controlling the day. Do you and then what, nothing gets done. Do you know what day it is, Chuck, right now? It's Sunday. It's Sunday. And do you know uh, what I haven't done since Friday? Um, I'm going to guess you haven't looked at your phone. Right. <laughs> at all. And I haven't gone on social media at all. Right. And I won't ever go on social media, by the way. I, ne- I never interact on social There's media. There's no need to. I have members of our team who I ask them to post certain things, um, but I don't ever go on there and read comments. It's just not my thing. Right. Um, I don't want to spend my day doing that. Because, Chip, the average American is spending how many hours per day on social media? Uh, it's like 2 point uh, something? 2.3 hours yeah, 2.3 per day. Hours. And we'll put a link to it on the show notes. Also, the average American is interrupted right now by their smartphone 90 plus times a day. And the psychology today says 91 times per day. And the average American is now watching 5.2 hours of TV per day, according to Nielsen. We'll put all these links on the show notes so you can prove this. But, Chuck, I mean, if you knew that the average American was spending 5.2 hours per day watching TV and 2.3 hours per day on social media, that would be 7.5 hours. Now, Tim, you have a, you are a CPA that's, by that, trade. That's a full-time job that's wasting full-time. your life. <laughs> Think of that, 7.5 hours per day. That's more than most people work at a full-time job, I believe. <laughs> 7.5 hours per day. Now, if you knew you could get 7.5 hours of your life, life back by simply taking three action steps would you be interested in taking those steps i think you should and here are the three steps one turn off the push notifications just don't look at those social media updates two don't watch tv unless it's an intentional thing right three don't go on social media to do anything other than to show your ads but Chuck, most people don't want to go on social media to show their ads, like their advertisements. What do they want to show? Most people want to go on social media to show their... <laughs> Again, most <laughs> people don't want to go on social media to show their advertisements or their... You, you, you should, though, as an entrepreneur. You should only go on social media to show your ads, but most people want to go on social media to show their... <laughs> I just abs. You were gonna say abs, right? I'm just saying there's a lot of people out there that need <laughs> or to learn body that. parts. Yeah. Now, action item number two, Chup, is what? Block out time and to take the action steps needed to achieve your goals. Please repeat that again. Block out time to take the action steps needed to achieve your goals. Chup, it's all happening so fast. Slow it down. Slow it down. You've got to block out block, time. Block, 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 block. To take the action steps needed to achieve your goals, Tim. Think about that. You've got to block out time. Right. So at 5 o'clock, people are going to come over to watch the Patriots game. Now the question is, who's coming over? Who? So I talked to my wife. I was allowed to invite a certain number of people because she doesn't like when there's more than a certain number of people, unless it's like a big, big, like like a Super Bowl party. We might have an unlimited invite list, but there's only a certain number of people. (laughs) And because we have five kids, we like to invite people who also have kids so our kids can play with their kids. We don't invite idiots. We have a specific time when it starts, a specific time when it ends. We have blocked out time for the achievement of our goals, and that's just a fun thing right there. It's good. It's good. Four o'clock, I go to resource. Chip, why do I go to resource at four? Why is it in my calendar? Uh, because you need to go visit with your buddy, the meat guy, right at the meat counter. And why is it? Why is it a specific time? Why don't I just put on my list to go get meat? Oh, because it, that's that's what leads to what we call drifting, and then all of a sudden your guests show up and you haven't been to the store yet. And then my phone's off, which means I can be mentally present. Because it right. turns out being present is a present. Mm, unwrap it. So what you want to do is you want to be present. You want to block out time for the action steps needed. Now, Monday, Chuck. Monday. Let's go to Monday. Let's Let's think about Monday. Monday. Here Here we go. go. So Monday, what time is our coaches meeting? 7 a.m. on Mondays. Okay. So I'm going to get up tomorrow. What time do you think, Chip? Um, around 3 or 4. Yep. I'm going to be at the office at what time do you think I'll get there? Uh, You probably get there around 4.30 to work out. 3.30. 3.30 to work out. Actually, you're right. I leave here at 3. 3.30, 3.30, so I'll get there at 4. Right, that 4 work that, That's another example. I don't even know what's in the counter. I'm just trying to think that's about it. That's the beauty of the out. system. You don't have to. 3.30, though, I head to the office. Meet meet John up there at 4. We work out. Get bumped. 4.30, I begin refining my to-do list for the day. 5 o'clock, refine the to-do list. The coaches meeting starts at what time? 7 on Monday, 6 every other day. What happens after 7 for you? Uh, I go into back-to-back-to-back meetings. Do you remember the I first go. one on Monday after the 7 meeting? Could the you think about one, it? Yes, it is with four tip-top locations. Uh, Tip top canine locations. Can I tell you what I do on Monday after that meeting? What? I don't know. That, that's the only thing I know. It's because there's four. <laughs> I don't even know. I think it's the, it's the all staff meeting. No. Nope. I think no. Nope. No. You it's have not. one in between there. That's I don't even nine. know what it is. 
Whatever it is. Again, is that's I, the beauty. I talk about this with my clients all oh, the man. time. I just lift up my to-do list and I have my day printed off hour by hour right underneath it on my clipboard. Yes, my physical clipboard that I carry around everywhere. And I say, I don't even know who I'm meeting with next and it doesn't even matter. Chip, what are you going to do on Monday at 2 p.m.? Don't know. You don't know? Meeting with somebody. I'm meeting with a client. That's what I know. Tim, why do a lot of a- academics and why do a lot of unsuccessful entrepreneurs insist on memorizing and trying to memorize their calendar or their schedule or their to-do list as opposed to creating a physical, tangible calendar and to-do list? I don't know. Is there a good answer to that? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I think it's like a, people feel like they're ignorant by having to have a calendar. Yeah. Or a to-do list. I think they're gonna. I think they they say I am going to just get it done when I have time. But that never happens. It never happens. It they never might happens. have something. To, the same mentality of people that really push back against a checklist, right? It's my mm. ego. I'm better than. I'm above that. But you're not. What you end up doing is missing out on things that you need to do. Now, I know what I'm doing on Monday at uh, three. You know why, Chuck? Why? I just pulled it up on the calendar. That's right. <laughs> okay, so I'm recording. Cheat with, sheet. <laughs> I'm recording with a guy by the name of Sam Conniff. I'm recording uh, "Humble the Poet" at four. Sam Conniff at three. Take Aubrey to Boy Scouts at 6.30 p.m. Let's go to Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday at 3, I'm interviewing Jonathan Barnett, the founder of OxyFresh, and Tom Smith, the guy who invented the Walmart Supercenter. No. Sam Walton's right-hand man. Nice. Um, true story. Turns out he's a second cousin of one of our clients there, Stacy Purcell. Shout out, Stacy Purcell. Uh, 4 o'clock on Wednesday, I'm interviewing John Rulin. Um, and then at uh, Thursday, I'm interviewing Christine Hassler at 5.00. Uh, then I, I'm not interviewing anybody on Friday. Um, then you go into the next week, the 28th, I'm interviewing Grant Sabatier. Sabatier? Ooh. On the uh, 29th, I'm interviewing Jennifer Farr Davis and Kelly Levique. Um, then I'm interviewing uh, Josh Levs. And then I'm, I, I just don't even know what's going on. I don't know. Chuck, there's so much going on. I have no idea what's going on unless I put it in the calendar. I think we're going too fast. Can we go back to the first, the first action item? Repeat the first action item. And have Tim, I want Tim to supply some uh, color commentary about this first action item. So, Chip, read the first action item one more time. Use one day planner for your entire life, personal and workplace. Tim, I want to get your take on this. I tell you, uh, even in my own life, Clay, I have uh, been too busy to keep all my things at one one place and so I'm in a yellow sticky or I've got a notebook or oh, I've yeah. got a sheet of paper. So my life and my planning, my thoughts are spread out all over the place. Mm. And uh, so I'm going to work with uh, overwhelm, anxiety, and a feeling of inadequacy when I do that. However, if I just keep it all in one day planner, one pro- I actually I, I believe in having a set time, place, and pattern for I believe the most powerful hour, the hour wow. of power every Whoa. day, and that's your planning, your power planning, where you put it all in one place so you know where it is. If you if you need to revert to something or a client doesn't show up and you've got some uh, fill in the blank with yes. some phone calls you want to be able to do, it's all right there. And Chup, if you don't want to be successful, we have um, eight Eight, eight tips we like to give the listeners for not, for not being <laughs> successful, okay? So tip number one to not be successful is don't have one day planner. Correct. Have multiple day planners. Step number two, tip number two to not be successful would be don't block out time for the action items needed to be successful. Tip number two, if you don't want to be successful, is say yes to everything. Now, for the sake of time, we don't have time to get into all those tips, but I do have tip number eight for what you want to do if you want to be unsuccessful. Probably my best tip is tip number eight. Uh, always keep bags of your own poop. Collect it throughout your stay and just have it ready. <laughs> I just want to have it ready. That's a That'll get a you great, right to the bottom real quick. That, <laughs> that is a great tip. That was, that was pretty good. Though. you got to make a point for that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So now, so now we move on to action item number two. One more time, Chip. Let's repeat it. Action item number two is what? Block out time to take the action steps needed to achieve your goals. Now, we just had John Maxwell on the podcast. Yes, we did. But uh, he's not on today's podcast. So let's go ahead and read the notable quotable that he said about day timers, day planning, your agenda. It all comes down to what you do daily. I believe the secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. 
And don't call me Shirley. Chip, can you repeat that again? <laughs> please, please, please repeat that. It all comes down to what you do daily. I believe that the secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Chip, I feel like there's somebody out there that's still not getting it. He just said that the what? It all comes down to what you do daily. I believe that the secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. <laughs> People want it to be deeper than that. I think people don't even realize the term, the words daily and agenda go together ever. Like, it's just the day's here. What am I doing with it? I don't I know. Just, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get where we're not connecting here. I want to I teach this. And if you don't get it, I'm a bad, I'm a bad teacher. It's us. There's no bad students. It's, it's just us. a bad teacher. Yes. I, I think a lot of people really don't respect themselves enough oh, ooh. to be intentional. I believe that's the, uh, we're made in the image of God. Now, here's a preaching moment. It's Sunday. We're made in the image of God, and the image of God we're primarily made in is intentionality, to live your purpose intentionally. That is so powerful. Now, what you have to do, if you're an entrepreneur, you have to focus on being a solution-minded, proactive person, solution-minded, future-focused. Yes. You want to be somebody who gets over adversity quickly. This is where I think a lot of people get off the rails as well. They make a, they make a calendar, all right? They make a to-do list, which I have done. I, I, I've done that. And this just happened to me on Wednesday, I think it was, or, or I think it was Wednesday, maybe it was Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah. I was, I can't remember, but I was, I was, um, I wrote, I'm writing this book called The Mastermind Manuscript. Right. Which is, again, a distilling all of the people I've interviewed over the past 22 years and their tips for success. And I pitched the book to somebody. And you know what happened, Chuck? What happened? He rejected me. Mm. I pitched the book and he rejected me. <laughs> But you know what I did immediately as a result of the rejection? Uh, you pitched it to someone else. Right. <laughs> and I have a list of like 100. I literally yeah. have a list of about 100 people I'm pitching the book to. And I just don't care who rejects it's it. It's a math equation. No, no, no to get a yes. That's how it works. I don't even care. I think a lot of people, though, they get stuck in that. Like, oh, I just I just don't feel good. I just I think once you get into that place where you don't feel good and then you start lamenting on it, that's when you lose. And then, Chup, you know what happens? You know what they say. See a brawl to get that booty act <laughs> Lay her down or smack them, yak them. I don't even know what that means, Chuck. But I think but a lot of people... If you follow that path, that's what happens. <laughs> I think that's a lot a... of people are running around saying... Oh, Billy. <laughs> as opposed to moving on. You just have to move on. You have to move on. So you have an appointment scheduled at 2 to meet with that big sales prospect, and they miss the meeting. It happens. So put it back in your hot leads and get back to work. And the cool thing is if you have a calendar and a to-do list, you just look down at your to-do list and do the next thing on it. You know an incredible way to waste time too, Chuck? Another tip, tip number four, I believe, would be what you <laughs> want to do is you want to talk about religion Yep, yep. and get into a divisive conversation and then stay there. Sprinkle a little politics right How many denominations are there, Tim, in America right now, <sighs> Christian denominations? Uh, like too many to count? Several Seriously, hundreds. are there hundreds? There's hundreds, several hundreds. So let me give an example to the listeners out there of something that I don't care about, but maybe somebody else does. In high school, I was dating a, a person who was, I dated a lot of people, so I'm not throwing a particular person under the bus. We'll just say I was dating a person at one point whose parents were really into the kind of Baptist, and I don't know what kind of Baptist this is, but it's the kind of Baptist that believes that healing doesn't really happen and that speaking in tongues is not a thing. Now, I went to an Assembly of God church that taught that speaking in tongues was a move, and that you could become spirit-filled. And I wasn't a Christian at the time either. Any, either way, I, did, I wasn't a Christian at all. But I had one person whose parents pulled me aside and said, do your parents go to that church where they believe in healing? And I said, well, yeah. And they're like, oh, this is a problem. So they made me start going to their church or I couldn't date their daughter. Mm. And then I remember meeting somebody who was a member of the Church of Christ. And they thought that if you played an instrument during church, Tim, am I making that up? If you play an instrument during church at the Church of Christ, that was a party foul? That, that's my understanding of that particular denomination. But then there was another, another church that I was involved with that I was dating somebody, and they were Catholic. And they thought it was like a bad deal if you prayed to God directly, because I guess you have to pray to the priest or whatever, or talk to the priest and he prays on your behalf. Or But they do like communion. So all I'm saying is you could spend your whole day talking about religion. The lady who runs our call center is really uh, somebody who is into Buddhism. 
And I'm not going to sit there, Chip. You don't see me debate with her during the day about her religious beliefs. Nope, we're there to work. Now, tip number five to waste a ton of time if you want to is talk about religion or talk about politics all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about politics. It gets you a really far ways in relationship building. Just get on a huge, get into a big discussion <laughs> about whether Trump w- should have grounded Nancy Pelosi's plane or not. Just get in. You could spend hours there. You could spend, talk about the wall. Are we going to get the wall? Are we not? Talk about it. Spend your whole day talking about that. And then the next tip is talk about your feelings and how you feel all the time. Oh, I just feel this way. I feel that way. I feel that way. I feel this way. They're all circular conversations. They never get you. Another tip for not being successful is make sure you're a victim. Yes. Just yeah. make sure yeah. that yeah. Just you know, it. no matter Just what happened to you, make sure that that's the reason why you can't get something Just done. Just dwell. Talk on about how <laughs> I can't make cold calls because as a kid I just got rejected a lot. No. You have to become a proactive person. Now, now Chip, let's talk about action item number three. What is action item number three? This is a big one. Woo! Oh, I keep stepping on your line. No, 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 no. The, the thing is, Chip, this, when I hit this button, you do whatever you want. This button means this is Chip's show. You do whatever you want. Go for it, Chip. <laughs> action item number three. Yes, sir. Say no to everything that is not related to your F6 goals. You know, uh, Jack Welch uh, talked about this famously. He talked about how... A lot of times people are the obstacle to your goals. Yeah. A lot of times the people are obstacles to your goals. Like, a.k.a. there are people in your life, in your family right now, people in the family that you were born into that are getting in your way, people that are being roadblocks, people in your company right now who are C players who are roadblocks to your ultimate success. And because Jack Welch could not be on today's show, I have an audio excerpt of Jack Welch explaining the kind of people that will destroy your organization, your dreams, and your plans. Uh, not a team player, low, low energy, a cynic. A cynic is a real, I want to say, pain in the arm. They, 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 they're just negative energy. Nothing is worse than negative energy in an organization. Nothing is worse. The wet blanket, the person that's poo-poo in this idea. Oh, we did that last year. Now, Jack, now Jack Welch talks about the kind of people you need to have in your organization to get anything done. If you have C players, you cannot get anything done. I don't care about your daytimer. I don't care about your calendar. If you have people on your team that will not do what they're supposed to do, you will lose. Now, if you surround yourself with a team of A players, you will win. And this is how Jack Welch defines A players. Again, Jack Welch being the CEO who grew GE by 4,000%. When he took over the company. When he took over the company, they were not growing. They grew by 4,000%. When he retired, they quit growing, and now they're kind of a listing. They're kind of drifting. They're bailing water. They might be sinking. Things are not going well. This is how Jack Welch describes A players. Describe the attitude and the behavior of top people or A's. Uh, They're filled with energy. They excite people and energize them. They're likable. They have good values. They're good people. And they have something else. Now, this is something you ought to really think about. They have a gene. And this gene says, I love to see people grow. Now, Tony Shea, who is the CEO of Zappos, he talks extensively about what you need to do once you've defined the expectations in your company of what an A player looks like, once you've told people, this is what I'm looking for out of high quality, this is, this is the kind of character traits I'm looking for in my company. Once you've defined your mission and what you're looking for out of, your, out of the people you hire, once you've defined that mission statement, you've defined the character traits you're looking for, he said, this is what you need to be doing. For us, by committable, we meant that we wanted to hire and fire people based on whether they're living up to those values, completely independent of their actual job performance. So even if they're doing their specific job perfectly fine, even if they're a superstar, if they're not living up to those core values, then we will fire them just for that reason. And That's powerful right there, the idea that you're going to push people out of your company if they have the wrong attitude, because they will kill the mojo for everybody. Absolutely. You can't bring in new people and try to groom them into the talented people that you need them to be with someone like that already on staff. Chuck, please restate action item number three. Say no to everything that is not related to your F6 goals. Now, Steve Jobs says what on on the subject there, Chip? He says, people think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on. But that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. You have to pick carefully. I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. Chip, I want you to repeat it again. Let's just kind of slow rotisserie marinate on this quote here. 
People think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on. But that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas that there are. You have to pick carefully. I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. Innovation is saying no to a thousand things. Oh, so think about that for a second. Chep, at five o'clock today, what am I doing again? Uh, you're going to be watching a football game with some friends. And what am, I, what am I not doing? You're not doing anything else. Mm. What am I doing at four o'clock again? You're going to get meat for said gathering. Not anything else. What was I doing at 3 o'clock this morning? Uh, you were up getting ready to start your day editing your massive, massive book. How many people, what, what if somebody's tried to call me since Friday? What am I going to do? Don't know, don't care. Right. <laughs> what if someone tried to send me a message since Friday? Don't know, don't care. What if somebody was dying on the side of the road and they had to reach me? Don't know, probably care, but don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't, I seriously, I am completely unreachable. Yeah. Now, my immediate family can reach my wife, but I am not going to be Reachable because we're doing this show right now. Right now, can't, can't be, be interrupted phone. right yep. now. No, nope. no. And Chep, we're building this pool out there. It's got to happen. Building this pool. Yep. And you know when I'm building the pool, what I'm not doing? I'm not doing anything else. Right. Meeting with the contractors, talking about what we want, where we want picking it, how it's going to go, picking out the layout. Uh, Chep, you know how many speaking events I've turned down this year? A lot. A lot. You know, 30, 40 events. Why? Because I just don't want to go. Well, but we want to pay you. This is where it gets crazy. And Tim, I'm sure you've seen this. There's a lady who reached out to me who said, I would love for you to speak to our college, and this college was in Arkansas. Okay. And I said, I, res- I really appreciate it, but I cannot do it at this point. I respectfully decline. And she says, why? I said, it's not on my F6 goals. You know, I have goals for faith, family, finance, fitness, friendship, fun, and that's not on my goal list right now, so I'm, I'm not going to go. And this is where it gets weird. She would not stop asking and i said i really appreciate it but i'm not going to go she said but i thought your goal was to mentor millions i said that's true but we have you know half a million people that download our podcasts and unless a half million people or more are there it wouldn't make sense for me to speak to 200 people and she's like well we're willing to pay like ten thousand dollars that's great but i don't need more money i can't make more time right but i can make more money i I appreciate you but i'm not going to go and she just would not stop and some people will not stop inviting me to uh, some Christmas event at their church. Or a, a, a social networking event upstairs at our office. Or to or go <laughs> uh, speak at a chamber event. Right. Or to uh, lunch. Do, an, do an interview. Or to meet for lunch. Right. Or to do coffee. Or to anything. I say no to everything. But no is such a powerful word. It, it is. And I'll tell you, Clay, I was uh, coaching a very successful business guy. I've been coaching him for about 15 years. Yeah. And we are we have a plan to get him to making twenty million dollars a year in profits. Wow! And so we're talking to him about when you say yes to somebody else's agenda, you're saying no to your own agenda. You only at this point in your life, you only have time to get your main stuff done. And that's why I think the podcast has been so powerful for me. Yeah. Um, so I, I was telling Vanessa, it, the podcast to me is the perfect intersection of, we, we, call, we call it the Vesica Pisces, the intersection of two circles. Mm. But the guests we have, um, have they, they don't need to make any more money. And they can't make more time. So I'm interviewing people at the peak of their success. You know, Guy Kawasaki, Wolfgang Puck, Jeff Hoffman, the founder of Priceline, David Robinson. I mean, just huge names, right? And the reason why they agree to do the interviews with me is because they understand my values. Right. And they want to share their message with as many people as possible. Yeah. Not because they want to hang out with me. Now, if I ever called them and said, hey, you want to hang out? I probably would get a lot of no's. Probably every one of them would be a no because they know their goals. And purposeful people aren't going to hang around and just drift. And that is why I think it is so dangerous to do the wrong kind of networking. It is. There are so many men's groups, women's groups, networking groups where you're around the B team. And the B team teaches that you should network with everybody. Right. That everybody could be a potential buyer. That you should listen to everyone. Everybody everyone, can be an A player. Everyone can be an A player. Everybody's in, everybody has some advice you should listen to. Right. You should never say no. You should say yes. I've, I've been to events in the past, what, 15 years ago, where the keynote speaker actually said that to become successful, you have to become a yes man and learn to say yes to everything. And I thought, what? Because that is totally opposite of all the successful people that I know. Right. The, the most successful people that I know say no to everything except for the things on their F6 
goal is. You know, I've heard uh, Dr. Z on the show often say, if you run with the dogs, you get fleas. True. Inaction can rub off on you. If you're hanging out with that type of person, then you're going to begin to imitate or emulate that. And so you, it is very important to pay attention to who you're networking with. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions here, Chuck, and you give me a true or false here. Oh, okay. According to Forbes, nine out of 10 small business owners fail. True. Okay. So if there were 100 entrepreneurs in a room, 100 entrepreneurs in a room, 90 of those entrepreneurs would fail. True. Okay. So startup, nine, let's see, nine out of 10 startups, right? I'll nine out of 10 this, startups yep. would fail. So if we were in a room of uh, 100 startup entrepreneurs, 90 of them would fail. Exactly. Now, That's... according to Forbes, eight out of 10 business owners fail. Correct. So if we were in a room of 100 business owners, not just startups, 80 of them would fail. Exactly. So you should not listen to the feedback of eight out of 10 people you meet. Think about that. Now, <laughs> think about this. According that's, to the that's wa- profound. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, according to the Washington Post, seventy-two percent of men. We'll put it on the show notes. Cheat on their spouse. Seventy-two percent of men cheat on their spouse. Now, if there were a hundred men in a room, Chup, the hundred hundred married men in the room, that means you shouldn't listen to how many of them? Seventy-two out of that one hundred. Mm. Now, the studies show. This is a study from Psychology Today. It's a little less than eighteen percent of all men like their spouse. A little less than 18%. It's not very much. So if you're looking for marital tips, you probably shouldn't listen to 82 of the 100 men in that room. Now, more statistics that are pretty incredible for you. The average American, which means a little over half of Americans, have less than $400 saved, which means if you're looking for financial tips, if there's 100 people in a room, you wouldn't want to listen to about half of them, Chuck. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's Now, think about that. So if the vast majority of people are not successful. Does it make sense to go to networking events where the vast majority of people are? Does that make sense? No, it does not. It's interesting how all of the top entrepreneurs that I've interviewed throughout my lifetime, Chip, I never met them at a networking event. Weird. Very you know weird. The, you know who I have met at a lot of networking events? Uh, entrepreneurs? The B team. The B team. And the B team is readily available. They're ready to meet at any time. They're ready to go to Panera Bread right now. So if the A team rides in a cool van, what does the B team ride in? Oh, boy. I it's, I don't know. Maybe a Ford Festiva. <laughs> Festiva. The They're packed in there like a clown car. <laughs> Work with me on this. Every entrepreneur that I've interviewed who's worth a billion dollars, which is many, or a hundred million dollars, which is many more, do you know, Chuck, that before the podcast, I had to offer to pay them to meet? Yeah, just because you've told me. But yeah, I didn't know that. A lot of people wouldn't even think about There's that. There's one guy in particular, uh, the guy who started uh, Quick Trip, Mr. Chester Kadja, who yeah. I could never interview, but I did interview his son. And for years, I tried to get a meeting with the guy, and I couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it. Because you know why? He values his time. Right. And his time with his family and his business. He's an intentional person. So I offered, I said, hey, I will make a donation to a cause of your choice. And uh, long story short, somebody set up that meeting for me. I met with him. He would not accept my donation, but he wanted to make sure I was serious, and I had a limited window of time right. with which to meet the guy. But he wasn't at networking events passing out his card saying, hey, you know, here's some quick, if you're looking for some <laughs> internship, come find me, because he has a billion-dollar business. True. But the people who typically have never built a business love to be at the networking events. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to tee up this unique final idea that I want to end today's show on. Be careful about who you're getting advice from. Uh, the, very rarely will you find a guy like Tim Redmond who's grown a company from two people to 450 people and who says, you know what, I want to teach what I've learned. Um, very rarely will you find a program like the Thrive Time Show program where we take a, a maximum of, of 160 business owners and we coach them. Uh, but, Chip, why don't we take on 5,000 clients? Uh, well, if one, it's not on your goal list to try and to get to that scale. But, dude, how much time do we spend mentoring all of our coaches? Oh, the it's, it's all uh, every morning we spend a minimum of an hour, but there's a lot of stuff several that goes years. into it. Yeah, several years to to prep and be able to uh, learn all of the systems and best practices. I pour my teach. heart into that team every single morning. Yeah, every morning. And Chuck, what percentage of the business plans that are that we coach our clients down do I make? Uh, one hundred percent of them. Right. Yep. So this weekend we have a person that reached out that wants to be a client. Yep. And uh, if we decide if we it, she wants to move forward, I don't think we have a spot open. But if we do have an opening like in March, guess who has to make that business plan? That would be one senior Clay Clark. And how long does that take me? About four or five hours. Got to be, yeah. Because it's a lot of work. Yep. So all I'm saying is be careful of the B team. Tim, why do we have to be careful of getting advice from the average Joe? You become the people you hang around with. And uh, the quality of their advice becomes the quality of your lifestyle. Oof. So you got to really, really 
put a filter on the input in your life. Let me give some uh, B-team advice you're going to hear at Chamber of Commerce events so you can inoculate <laughs> yourself from the jackassery. Okay? This is one tip you will hear at almost every B-team event. They will say, Chuck, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is insanity. That's the definition, Clay. But in fact... Not doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is the definition of is the definition of insanity. Absolutely. Quick Trip does the same thing over and over, over every day over, with over, excellence. Over. Southwest Airlines does the same thing over and over every day with excellence. FedEx does the same thing over and over every day with excellence. But the new entrepreneurs out there, the B team, who constantly these entrepreneurs with these squirrely schedules running around with their idea of the week, they've got new ideas every day, Chuck. New ideas. They do. And and when he's saying do the same thing over and over, he's not saying don't get better at what you're doing, but quit trying to add new everything. Just do the same thing over and get 2% better every day. Another stupid thing I hear at these networking events is you just got to invest time to engage with people on social media. No. I've never, I've I've yet to interview (laughs) any entrepreneur except for, I would say, uh, Jill Donovan and the lady who started uh, Charlotte, Handmade Charlotte, Rachel Fawcett. Those are the only two I've interviewed so far that talked about their engagement on social media because that's how they sell things. Right. They get their products out there in front of people, right? But I don't I don't see what the, the head of Starbucks or the head of Quick Trip or the head of anything going on social media all day arguing with people. It's just it's not I mean, very rarely will you find a leader of anything that spends their entire day engaging with people on social media. It's it's a cauldron of bad advice. Another uh bad another tip you're gonna hear from the B team is they're gonna say that all people all people, all all people, all people deserve an opportunity to work in your company. And it's not true. It's not true at all. Because I would say if you have an A-team organization, we all know C players. We all know the member of the family that, that everyone can't stand. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hire them to be a waiter at your restaurant. No, not uh, the, 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 the B-team says, oh, you should always you should always hire family when possible. And then family, blood is thicker than, what do they say? Blood is thicker than water. Water. Yeah. So you should never fire a family member? Wrong. No. Everybody that I know who has a successful company that hires family ends up firing some member of their family. If you hire enough members of your family, you're going to have to fire somebody. There's going to be a, a quote-unquote bad person. Not you know not like a bad intentions, but they're just bad at being a person, right? They can't get anywhere on time. They can't fulfill <laughs> anything that they've said. They cannot work for you just because they're family. Another B-team advice I hear at these events is they somehow try to mix in um, very, very vague advice yes. that tends to be of a spiritual nature into things that aren't spiritual. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Steve Jobs, who started Apple, was he a Judeo-Christian? No, I, don't, I believe he was not. Mm. Okay, Elon Musk, is he a Judeo-Christian? Uh, again, no, I believe not. The founder of Hobby Lobby is a Christian, though. Yes. So I've just listed off three billionaires, one of which is a Christian and two of which are not. This just in, you can be a fundamentally not sound person morally and be successful. Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. Steve Jobs uh, denied the existence of his daughter, Lisa, but then named a computer after her. Weird. Um, but he ended up you know, changing his life. We all make mistakes. We all improve over time. But he did start Apple. I mean, uh, there are many people who are super successful that have uh, scammed and cheated and lied and their whole way. To the- so don't sit there and have a spiritual interactions with your sales script. Right. J- just the opposite is also true, Clay. There are morally driven people that do not have good work ethics, good oh. practices, and they're struggling. I have done that myself. It is possible. Morally driven, yet poor as you can be. <laughs> I've also happens. seen I've also seen again the B team will tell you this advice. They will say, they will say that what you need to do is that opportunities are limited, so you need to seize them when you see them. That's not true. Nope. You got to be strategic. You've got to be strategic. Other things the B team likes to say. The B team likes to say that you need to focus on your feelings. And you got to go with your gut all the time. They're always talking about your gut and going with your feelings. Well, let me tell you this. Every time that I've had to fire somebody who's been with my team for more than 2 years, my gut tells me to keep them, and my gut's wrong. Right. So I don't listen to my gut. <laughs> now, my wife might listen to her gut cuz she's more in tune with uh, the Bible than I am. But if my gut says, "We should hire this guy. I think he can really turn his life around." I go, that's probably Satan talking directly to me because I should not do it. Every time I ever, Get out of my gut, Satan! Every time I've ever used my gut, it's always wrong. Yeah, it's it, sometimes it happens, right? Feelings. So, you can't operate off of feelings. If you're out there today and you want to leave the B team and join the A team, 
I would invite you to attend our next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop. We only host six of them per year, and they are life-changing, game-changing events. As of right now, we have over a 1,000 reviews on YouTube from real people sharing their real stories of how the conference has really impacted them. We also now have over a 1,000 people who've left us objective reviews on iTunes. Yes. A 1,000 people who've left left us an objective review on iTunes. We also have over 540, it's five, I think we have 544 reviews right now on our Google uh, Maps from people who've attended the conference sharing their experience. So if you're out there today, I would encourage you to be skeptical. Do your research. See if it's right for you. It's a money-back guarantee. The tickets are $250, and if for some reason you cannot afford the $250, uh, one, unplug your cable, and two, leave us an objective review on iTunes today. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Leave us an objective review, and then we will uh, give you tickets for just $37. There you go. All you have to do is subscribe on iTunes, leave us an objective review, and send us a screenshot of the review so we can prove that you did it, and uh, email us to info at thrivetimeshow.com. That's info at thrivetimeshow.com, and we will send you tickets to the next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop, Chop. It's going to happen. It's going to be there. Clay, the, this is the same workshop. Even better, other people have paid $1,500 a person. Agreed. I was there with that. And uh, the, the, the conference is even better now. Way better. Chuck, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tee up an audio testimonial from a Thriver who's actually attended the workshop. Yes. So the listeners can hear somebody who's really attended the workshop sharing their real experience from their perspective. I think that's super important, and it goes back to what you were just saying. You said, be careful who you're getting your advice from. People like to talk, and people like to hear themselves speak. So just because somebody's speaking, don't listen to them. Look for the fruit that they've produced. And speaking of the fruit, let's hear that testimonial. Okay, so this one came in from somebody. This would be um, two weeks ago. Okay. So let me cue up this audio. This is from an audio testimonial from two weeks ago. My name is Trisha Rich, and I'm from Saturday Beach, Florida. Our business is a restaurant, a cafe, a restaurant, a uh, uh, bar. We originally heard about a conference through a customer of ours that started with Thrive and has come to a conference, and we actually heard them on the podcast. Chuck, just in case that audio there is a little bit hard to hear, let me cue up another one that maybe may be a little easier to hear. Let's cue up this one here. Here we go. Always circles back around in a way that you can understand and in a way that's not boring. You're not bored. You're always entertained, but it's not meaningless. I would describe the atmosphere as uniquely crafted. Everything is intentionally done a certain way. There are quotes, notable quotables everywhere, even the bathroom. <laughs> So, Chup, I mean, people can come and experience the Thrive Time Show workshop. They also get to experience our offices. Yes, it's amazing. Uh, you get to see what it looks like to when somebody's taken time and been intentional about their workspace. The other cool thing that I hear from clients or people that come, and I talk about it on the show a lot, but iron sharpens iron. It's mm. awesome to get to this conference and see there are other people out there going through the same things that you're going through, and there's also answers to those problems that is on the proven path of the Thrive Time Show. You know, I invited uh, Michael Levine to attend our in-person workshop. Yes, you did. And Michael Levine is the public relations consultant of choice for Nike, President Bush. Michael Jackson. President Clinton. Pizza Hut. Prince. Uh, Nancy Kerrigan. Michael J. Fox. Charlton Heston. Keep going. A bunch of big names. Yes. And, and Michael has spoken at and has attended hundreds of conferences all over the world. Yep. Some of the ones he's attended, Tim, are those $1,500 events. He's been to these things. And Michael, unsolicited, he got home to California and he said, yes. Clay... I wanted to record a video uh, sharing my experience at the workshop because I feel like um, people need to know how it stacks up versus other workshops around the world. So without any further ado, here's the audio sample of uh, uh, Michael Levine sharing about his experience attending the Thrive Time Show workshop. Here we go. Hello, my name is Michael Levine, and I have given thousands of speeches in fact, I'm the only man who has ever given speeches at Harvard and Oxford who did not graduate college. So I've been doing this a very long time in a lot of very interesting places. Now, I just came back from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I gave a speech for the Thrive Time Show Conference. And I must tell you, it was an exceptional event filled with exceptional people, and uh, it restored some of my faith in uh, 
my dwindling uh, sense of humanity. I'm discouraged by some of what I see in contemporary life, but Thrive Time was exceptional. And uh, I hope to go back again, but more importantly, if you're thinking about attending a conference that in two days can really, really bring extraordinary value to your life, not only professional life, your personal life as well, then I really endorse the Thrive Time Show Conference. Uh, Clay Clark and his group are exceptional people. They are uh, deeply, deeply devoted to people making uh, significant progress in not only their professional lives, but their personal lives as well. So my name is Michael Levine, totally unsolicited. I'm not paid to say this. I can say whatever I want. And by the way, I have enough money that I really can say whatever I want. So uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope it's of some value and some interest. Uh, and I hope you'll check out the Thrive Time Show Conference. I tell you, I tell you, that, that is, that, this is why we do this workshop is to help people bridge the gap from where you're at right now yep. to where Michael Levine is right now. We want to help you exactly. bridge the gap. So let me cue up a testimonial from a thriver out there who I think many people could identify with. And uh, this is an entrepreneur. This is a, a guy out there who has a real business. He's out there cleaning carpets in Owensboro, Kentucky. Now, those of you who might know that I'm a homer for OxyFresh. I work with John Barnett, my partner with Elephant in the Room, and OxyFresh now has... 396 locations around the world, over 145,000 reviews on Google. But it doesn't mean that we don't want to help out everybody. And there's somebody who's attending the workshop who has a carpet cleaning company in Owensboro. Now, am I going to coach the guy? No. Right. Why? Because if we have an OxyFresh in your location, we really do want you to lose. But in this guy's case, <laughs> um, we, he doesn't have. There's no OxyFresh in Owensboro. To Good my for knowledge. him. <laughs> And he attended the workshop, and he's a great guy. He's a drummer, actually, at a, at a local church yes. when he's not growing his carpet cleaning company. And this is what he had to say about attending the workshop. Here we go, and here we go. And uh, my name is Austin Farr, and I am from Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, I heard about the workshop from Pastor Brian Gibson. Uh, Clay actually came to church and spoke, and um, that was kind of where we were introduced to him. Wait a minute. A pastor invited us to come speak at his church to teach the good news and the gospel of wealth. This guy attended said service, and then he came. So he saw us t teach one time. Right. He says, you know, I, I want to get a little more of that. I want more. the two-day, 15-hour experience. So here we go. Um, and listen to him six days out of the week on the podcast. I own a carpet cleaning company, uh, and I was looking forward to actually listening to John speak because he's in that same industry. Uh, and just taking away the different ways to reach customers um, and the purple cow and also the, uh, the no-brainer was a big thing for me. Uh, the atmosphere here when I walked in, I had seen pictures of it and I was really anticipating getting to come here, but it's like super positive uh, inspiration and it's like a great place just to hang out. Clay's delivery and his style is very like, I know what I'm talking about, like he's really good at it. Uh, and it really is like attention grabbing. And I like it because when he's on something, he's really fixated and he like doesn't get off of it until he's finished. Uh, one of the most valuable things I've learned, uh, I think, is just in general putting systems to work and actually put them in place and making them happen. Uh, if people do not attend this, I think they're actually losing out on ways uh, to get free information, uh, giving you an action step just to make your business work. So, now, Chuck, I think a lot of people uh, don't want to come to a workshop unless it's entertaining. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. people want both the, the, the fusion of entertainment and uh, education. So I'm going to queue up an audio testimony from a thriver out there who actually had a good time at the workshop. And this guy's a younger wicker, uh, a younger wh wh whippersnapper. He kind of looks like, uh, who's the guy? Uh, Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez. The quarterback. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the butt fumble guy. Yeah. He, he kind of <laughs> looks like Mark Sanchez. Let me cue this up here. My name is Nick Guajardo, and I am from Tulsa. Uh, I heard about the Thrive Time Show workshop through um, Andy Matherin. He is my, uh, my, Andy Matherin and Larry Montgomery. Um, they're my bosses at Restore Home. So the boss says, employees, you have to come with me to this thing because I got to help you and I got to help our company. Well, so I work with um, a home health com company called Restore Home Health. And my role is pretty much to bring in business. So I was hoping hoping to learn 
kind of the sales process on top of just kind of the responsibilities and help understand what it looks like on the SEO side and just kind of an all around what it looks like to own a business because that's something I want to do in the future for sure. How I would describe the atmosphere here at Thrive um, is ex high energy, um, great professionalism, great people. It's just, it's a place you definitely want to visit and be at. Clay's delivery style, humorous, professional, hilarious. Just, he does it, I haven't seen someone do it better. So he does, he does a great job. So we focus on not just the way, not, not, not just the content we deliver, but we, t we focus on the way we deliver the content. Exactly. And if you want to know what we're going to cover at the workshop, you go to thrivetimeshow.com, you click on the conferences button, you can find all the itinerary there, or you can download a free copy of the boom book, the, 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 the actual curriculum, the workbook that we teach. It's a playbook. It's got all the moves in it. You can download the, 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 the book for free to get kind of a preview of what we teach. Just go to thrivetimeshow.com, click on the podcast button, and along the right column, you're going to see the books that you can download. I really, uh, Chuck, let's, let's, let's review this, okay? If somebody comes to the conference and they're not happy, they get their money, money back. back. Okay. If they, money back. Come if on. you go to the conference and you say, I want to go to the conference, but I can't afford it, you just have to subscribe to the podcast, leave us an objective review, and we give you the ticket for $37. That's right. If you, for some reason, can't afford the $37, we have a scholarship available, which means you just tell us how much you can afford to pay, and we'll let you come. Huge. Huge. Money back guarantee. Two days of nonstop training. It's unbelievable. From 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. both days. It's nonstop. <laughs> we serve lunch both days. Los Cabos and Andalini's. So good. Think about this, Chup. Now, this next one, we have Nick Simmons speaking. Nick yes, Simmons yes. is a Division Three athlete turned U.S. Olympic athlete. Yeah. He wasn't good enough to make Division Two or Division One. then somehow made the United States Olympic team and won a silver medal. He's going to be speaking. Awesome. His company called Run Gum. His product is found in Target stores all across America. And we have an unbelievable guy by the name of J.T. McCormick, who started one of the largest self-publishing companies on the planet, a company called Scribe Media. Yes. Scribe Media, the founder. He will be speaking at the workshop as well. His dad abandoned him. His dad, who was a pimp, abandoned him. He grew up amidst racism and poverty, and wow. he started a massively successful company. They charge approximately $36,000 to help you self-publish a book, and they've sold over 1,000 book projects. That's awesome. Which means we're talking like $36 million of revenue Woo! they've generated. Uh, these people are going to be at the workshop. Aaron Antis, the guy who leads Oklahoma's largest home-building company, will be there. I believe Wesley Carter, the attorney, the law firm of choice for uh, T.D. Jakes, for Joyce Myers, he's going to be attending the workshop. We have so many great speakers. Tim, you'll be speaking at the workshop. Tim's grown a company from two people to 450. It's the real deal. Tim's going to be there. Tim, I, look, I look forward to it. You know, Clay, what's really awesome is they get to hang out with other people like themselves. These right. are all business owners, not a bunch of wannabes. This, I, I, I've just given you, I think, eight reasons to attend the workshop. Yeah. And did I mention it's the highest reviewed workshop on the planet? And did I mention it is the best workshop on the planet? And did I mention that I am the most humble person in America? <laughs> Okay, Wait, maybe not. There? Maybe, wait, wait, who hit that? <laughs> well, as always, we like to end each and every show yes. with a boom. So here we go. Three, Three two, one, boom. boom.